Welcome to the Thursday, September 11th, 2014, first edition of the school committee for the 2014-2015 year. This time, we'd ask that you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please have a seat. This time I'd ask that we observe a moment of silence for our troops serving overseas. Thank you and good evening. Uh, prior to beginning the superintendent's updates, I would like to acknowledge that uh, one of our new principals is here, Sarah McLaughlin, who's taken over the Frost Elementary School. Uh, Pat Weir, as you know, retired, so we'd like to welcome her. Congratulations. First item uh, under the receiver's update is summer graduation. We had 86 students who graduated this summer. Uh, four of those students had previously dropped out. Uh, but had come back during our extended summer program, and they were able to complete anywhere between one and four courses, either online or on site. So it was a uh, great opportunity uh, for our students to get across the finish line and a lot of hard work, uh, not just from the students, but for their families to make sure that these students graduated. So we just want to applaud their efforts. Uh, second item under updates is we've been awarded the Universal School Lunch. Beginning this year, the Lawrence Public Schools will provide universal free lunch to all students in all grades. As you know, we currently provide universal free breakfast and snack. Several other school districts have received uh, this award as well, including Boston, Fall River, Fitchburg, New Bedford, Southbridge, and Webster. Uh, they will get the same service this year as we will. This is all made possible through a provision of the Federal Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act. So I think that's a uh, great opportunity. Uh, certainly helps the district cut down on some paperwork and make sure that all our students uh, get the nourishment that they need on a daily basis. So that is a great win for the school district. Uh, moving on to updates. Uh, this year at opening day, we welcomed over 2,200 staff at the Lawrence High School Fieldhouse to kick off the school year. Many of you were in attendance. We know some of you were unable to attend, so we wanted to share a short video of how it went. The reality of Lawrence is positive trends are happening. We've seen our graduation rate go way up, but we have more work to do. In 2011, our graduation rate was just about 50%. In 2012, it went up to 60%. In 2013, it went up again to 61.3%. And when the results come out in the next few months, we believe that number is going to go up again. We need our children to get across the finish line. So, basic things you need to know. Do we have higher MCAS CPI in English language arts? Yes, you do. Do you have higher MCAS CPI in math? Yes, you do. Do you have higher MCAS SGP or growth in English language arts? Yes, you do. Do you have higher MCAS SGP in math? No, it's the same, but it's okay. You can still clap. <laughs> and I say you can clap because last year when we had the highest SGP of any gateway city, as you can see from this chart, we had 57. That is incredible growth. And school districts that make that kind of growth find it hard to continue to make that kind of growth. But you did it again. We have 57 again, and I fully expect when these results are announced that we will be the number one gateway city in improvement in Massachusetts. Congratulations. Clap along if you feel happiness is the truth. Clap along if you know happiness is the youth. Clap along if you feel that's what you want to do. Chair. <laughs> so there's no 
more lust, sin is no more seen. And my garden thrives to see my nectarines. But I'm telling you the same, I tell kings and queens, don't you ever, never, ever mess around with my greens. Especially the beans. Okay, is that the end of the video? That's fantastic that we're ending there. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we did open the Lawrence Family Academy this year. Uh, as you know, the Boo Screw trailers were uh, in disrepair last year and we had to close those down and demolish those. Uh, so as part of the Hennessy Bruce restructuring, we did require the, to open up um, some additional space. Lawrence Family Academy was uh, uh, kind enough to help us take on some full day pre-K and kindergarten classrooms for the Tower Hill neighborhood. Uh, and I would ask if folks have time to go visit um, that building. Uh, where am I? Registration and enrollment. This year we did centralized registration. Registration took place at the Hall of the School Committee for K-8. to uh, The high school did registration at the high school campus. Uh, that will be the case until the Family Resource Center is secured. We do anticipate our Family Resource Center uh, will be secured in the near future. We hope to be in the new space, in fact, by October. Uh, we have seen over 300 new families since late August at the central office to register students across grade levels. Um, there's been some discussions about enrollment in this district, and I just wanted to say that um, we are again seeing an increase in our enrollment. If you refer to the enrollment trend sheets in front of you, the school committee has, you will notice the difference in enrollment numbers since 2012 uh, at this time of the school year. Now, I want to be clear, we're still cleaning up the data and can share better numbers with you uh, at the next school committee meeting. But if you look closely at the data, in 2012 we had 13,220 kids. Last year at this time, last year at this time we had 13,585 kids. And this year at this time we have 14,136. Now those numbers do fluctuate and go up and down as we begin to uh, uh, add students and take students that did not report to the district. But the trend is uh, one of increasing enrollment inside of the school system, which of course is going to put pressure uh, on our buildings and class sizes. So it's something that this committee needs to be aware of. Mr. Ali, uh, two questions. Just one, then a question for Mr. Maria. Um, how many uh, parents did we, or how many students did we enroll at the high school, at the centralized high school enrollment? Do you remember? I don't have the exact number. We can get it to you, though. Uh, we can send you an email tomorrow. Um, just trying to figure out what. How many net new students were getting at the high school versus how many kids? The, the trend I do, did remember looking at last week was there was more students coming at the elementary level than in the high school level, but we will get you all that data and we could have it first the whole committee if that's okay with you, Great. Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Mrs. Mariana? Uh, Superintendent, if possible, when you share the new data with us, could you um, break it down into grade structures so we can see where the, um, what the enrollment looks like at each grade level? I think that would be fine. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you, just as a, as a follow up to that, do you want to grant it to, to the grade level, the exact grade level, or the exact grade every year, elementary, high school? Well, I'd like, I, what I'd like to see is the individual schools with their grade level enrollments. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things, just as a, a basic indicator, is we've had some principals call up and say, close my fifth grade class. I have so many kids that I have to go <laughs> to my neighborhood, you know, the school that's next door to me. But when we look at it, the school next door to them actually has more kids in that same grade level. So uh, we are seeing pressures, uh, especially at the elementary school level. And while we're in the process of cleaning up all the data now, I fully expect uh, that we'll have a real uh, detailed accounting by grade level for you at the next October meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we'll actually, follow up. Yeah, Mr. Fagnano. Um, Superintendent Riley. As far as the Arlington uh, School, I saw that it jumped almost uh, a little bit more than 100 students. Uh, is that just uh, sort of a normal influx of students coming in, or is it maybe um, that the school is doing better, so you know more students are more parents are putting their students in that, in that school? Well, I, you know, it's hard to discern what certainly the schools, both of those schools, are doing better, um, but it's hard to discern if those are just general enrollment patterns, we have more families moving into that neighborhood or they're being attracted to the school. Uh, I believe also we did add a, an extra section at one of the lower grades uh, in kindergarten or pre-K uh, for the community day, Arlington portion of that. So that will account for a small number of students, but 
the numbers are certainly going up. Mr. Um, Mr. Bradford, thank you. Um, I, if I do recall correctly, Mr. Riley did send us kind of a breakdown of where in the city the population was going up, and that was, I mean, that was the major district where the population is rising, especially for the elementary school level. So it's, I, I imagine all those schools in that area will be seeing that kind of increase, tar not box. just our and mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you. So we've had uh, a visitor at the beginning of the school year. Uh, some of you were able to come. Uh, Randy Weingarten, the AFT National Union President, came to visit Lawrence and kind of recognized the great work being done by the schools and the teachers in particular. Um, I think we have some videos of her appearance that we'd like to show you. I just had the greatest conversation with these young ladies. And one of them is going to be Colleen. President of the United States one of these days. Hello, my name is Biarbo Castillo. My name is Francesca Arias. And we're here with Randy Whitegarden and Mr. Mr. McLaughlin. So today we just wanted to ask you what is the purpose of your visit here? Um, and what, are you, what is your message to us? So our visit is, you know, pretty simple. It's our union spends a lot of time thinking about and acting on how do we help make a difference in the lives of others. This year, I wanted to come back to Lawrence. I wanted to come back to Lawrence because Lawrence last year did something very special. They said, we know we have a problem and we need to change things and we need to make sure that we help every single child, student, reach her or his potential. In one of the schools I was in, Weatherby, um, sixth and seventh graders telling me they love being in school. And it was not like a practiced or prepared speech. It was why and what school means to them in terms of reaching for opportunity. And that makes my day, just like this kind of interview makes my day. And that's what makes the day of all teachers in America. We don't go into this work unless we really love kids and want to help make a difference in their lives. So that's why I'm here today. Awesome. Well, something else you were talking about prior to this was, what is your goal for the future in education? So you can probably say, just as I can, what are the real goals and purposes of education? So we actually put a palm card together that's called Reclaim the Promise of Public Education about how, what are the strategies that you use to actually help all kids succeed? And so they fall into three kind of areas. So let's say what our job is, is to help you guys build relationships, navigate your lives in that way, figure out how to trust, you know, your friends and adults, and how to have those kind of relationships. Number two, our job is to help you figure out how to critically think, how to apply knowledge. Number three, we all mess up. So how do you develop the skills of hard work and persistence and resilience so that if somebody, if you mess up, if we mess up, if I mess up, we can pick ourselves up. Every single school and every single public school in America should be a place where parents want to send their kids, educators want to work, and kids want to be. That's the goal, that's the gold standard. And that's what parent engagement can help do. It can also help say, well, we need to do more in an area. But if parents are not our partners, then we're not doing the best that we can do for kids. But this is a school system that loves its kids. And you see it in all the teachers, and you also see it in kids. And that's what I love about being in Lawrence. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Biarra Casillo. Francesca Arias. And we're reporting from the HLD News at Lawrence High School. Thank you.
So I think it was, you know, just a real honor to have the president of the National Union come in. Uh, she had thousands of schools or school systems she could have come to visit, but she wanted to come here to Lawrence, and I think that's a testament to the work of the teachers and what's happening inside these schools. I also want to uh, recognize Frank McLaughlin, who's here today, who's been a big champion of, uh, you know, reforming our schools from within, and so we'd just like to give him a round of applause. Frank, <laughs> Yes. Just real quick, I think that one of the reasons why um, the president of the, the union came was not only because of that, that the success that's happening here, but also because of that relationship with the collective bargaining unit. You know, when people think about um, educational um, innovation, a lot of the time they think that also equals no union involvement. And what we're doing here, I think a lot of people are saying, hey, wait a minute, we can have both a normal collective bargaining interaction and <coughs> innovation that gets us to success. And so, you know, again, that partnership that you and, um, and Frank McLaughlin have put together to get this type of attention is just holding out the district. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I couldn't agree more. I think um, teachers' unions have been demonized in the last decade, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, I'm proud that we're an AFT school district. I was a proud to be a principal of a high-performing AFT middle school when I was in Boston. My children go to an AFT school, K-8 school in Boston, and um, I, I cannot imagine any world where we wouldn't want to give our teachers some rights for representation. And uh, we believe we've created a system under our open architecture approach where, you know, uh, we push the authority down to the school level where teachers' voices are really heard. And we think doing things with people is much better than doing things to people. Uh, that is not always shared out there in the world, uh, but that's how we're trying to do business here in Lawrence. Other questions from the committee members? Thanks. Okay. Uh, we also uh, are pleased to announce that uh, the United States Secretary, Arnie Duncan, is coming to Lawrence next week uh, to celebrate the progress in the school district. Um, this is you know, pretty amazing to have both Randy Weingarten and Arnie Duncan in a two-week span come to talk about what's happening here in the district. Uh, we're working with this team to finalize the details of the visit, so you will all be receiving an invitation in the next day or two as soon as we get the finalized uh, invite from the feds. Uh, but we hope that the school committee can come uh, to that event as well. Okay. Next item on the agenda is high school accreditation. You know the high school has to go through an accreditation process, or we choose to go through an accreditation process. Um, with this process coming up at the high school campus, I've asked an outside uh, group called Big Picture Learning to provide reviews and feedback of every high school in order to assist their improvement efforts. Um, this is basically our chance to have somebody come in and look at the high school uh, before we build our reports for the accreditation. So it's kind of uh, checking our own house uh, before we go out and go through the accreditation process. The support is not limited to just the campus. We've actually asked these folks to kind of do a review of HLC, SES, and Phoenix as well. Uh, Big Picture Learning is just a nonprofit that provides professional development to schools to kind of create innovative, personalized learning environments that work with real world experiences. The organization doesn't provide like a one, fits, one size fits all approach, but customizes its supports. And, you know, I told Mr. Fiato, basically they're going to come in, look at the school. Uh, present you with some recommendations and then you've got to decide which recommendations you like, if any, and which recommendations you don't, and really begin to craft, you know, um, the plan for our accreditation at the high school. With a new headmaster, I think he's got a lot of energy, a lot of initiative and ideas, and I've challenged him to uh, make what, you know, the changes that you need to make to, you know, improve the high school experience for all our kids. Uh, so this is kind of a with accreditation coming up, this is a great opportunity for us to kind of um, examine what we do and uh, try to change or improve things that may need some work and, you know, continue the things that are working well. Any questions on that? Either? And is there a timeline on what this looks like? So they'll come in, they'll do an assessment, then what? So they'll come in, I think they're going to come in in the month of October, and uh, I've asked Mr. Fiato to try to, you know, the high school has already been working pretty diligently, the teachers and um, the administration on preparation for the accreditation process. That process uh, sometimes gets pushed back depending on how the teams get organized in different places. Uh, but I anticipate that we're going to have some kind of plan for Mr. Fiato around Thanksgiving. 
uh, which will kind of set the direction and kind of set us up for accreditation at the high school. Mr. Chair. Oh, yeah. um, Superintendent Riley, how can we help? Uh, well, uh, it's a great question, and you may rue the day for asking, but we might actually need you to be on some stakeholder groups uh, to kind of offer input into the process. When we actually go through accreditation, uh, they do like to speak to people that are leaders in the community, and I would hope that folks on the school committee would, if they had the time, uh, be willing to come in and speak about the high school and, and what's happened and the changes. And um, you know, so if, if folks can come and donate their, meet their time for meetings, that would be super helpful. And you know, I know, uh, Mr. Piana, you, for instance, have you know, done a lot of work at the high school. So uh, just kind of continue that process. If other folks want to come and help us, uh, accreditation process is a heavy lift. Um, there is a tremendous amount of work to do. So we're willing uh, to take all help uh, if folks want to get involved. I would just echo that piece and just trying to do the math. Since we have so many uh, Lawrence High School alums on the school committee, um, that we would take advantage of that insight. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Blatcher, thank you. Um, just, just for everyone who doesn't know at home, how long does the accreditation process take? And is each individual high school given accreditation at this point, or is it one big school? And do the smaller high schools like Phoenix have their own accreditation as well? Okay, so uh, these uh, small schools are not up for accreditation. The uh, Phoenix, SES, HLC, that is not part of it, but we're just kind of extending the big picture learning towards that. The high school itself, uh, is in negotiations uh, with the association to see if we want to be seen as one big school or six different schools. My sense is it may actually be a hybrid version uh, because we have kind of installed a headmaster over the different buildings. Uh, but some of those discussions are going on uh, inside the school right now and we're kind of waiting. You know, it's a dialogue that happens with the accreditation team uh, and our school system. So. We, we look forward to giving you a lot more information on this in the coming day. You guys are going to get handbooks and, and a bunch of other information about how this is going to kind of go down. I didn't want to um, commit to six different processes or one big school until Mr. Fiato really had a chance to kind of assess the situation, which is why we've kind of brought this group in and hoping that around Thanksgiving we'll have a final determination on how they're going to be viewed vis-a-vis -vis six different schools or one big high school. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Chief. So with the recommendations, we get to the point of the recommendations, um, will we all be privy to those recommendations <coughs> or only privy to the ones Mr. Fiato agrees to? No, we're happy to share the whole report with you guys. Absolutely. And then, I mean, this is just a consulting group coming in and kind of offering their advice and you know a lot of it may be great some of it may for reasons that you know the high school administration and the teachers at the high school know say oh that actually isn't going to work for our community but we're happy to produce that report for folks I think that would be uh, really important knowledge and can you share a little bit of how we became related or in a relationship with big picture learning did they solicit us is this something that you've seen at other schools before how did There's this come about yeah, so we actually had uh, a member of their organization uh, donate some time over a summer uh, a few years ago. Um, Mr. Frischman, he's got deep ties to the community, uh, and his mother, Kay Frischman, you may know from different foundations. And their organization has a real uh, strong reputation for uh, this kind of work. They sometimes uh, get involved and are more active, but that in in redesigning schools, but that's not what we're asking. We're just asking for kind of a, a short-term come in, assess what you see, offer the headmaster and the school, the teachers, uh, and the other administrators an assessment of what you see uh, to help Mr. Fiato and his team uh, kind of figure out what the direction is for our high school. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, you know, the only other Item on the agenda for tonight uh, is that our October school committee is going to be on October 8th. This is a slight change, I think, from before. Uh, we also need to discuss, uh, as we discussed in June of last year, and I'm hoping, Mr. Mayor, you can lead kind of the group in this discussion right now, about where we want to hold these meetings. Uh, we do recognize that um, our central office space right now has been a little bit tied up and that we may be moving 
And so it's possible it could have, it, the school committee could take place at the Family Welcome Center. Um, if that does open in October, it may be more advisable to have it in schools for the first few months. I'm not sure, but as I said, uh, in June, I want to make sure that uh, the school committee kind of weighs in. What do you guys feel most comfortable with? Where do you want to meet? Uh, what's the format? It certainly could be here. It could be on tour. Yeah. I mean, I think what's been working is going out to the schools in a way, and that allows the schools to, to showcase it. But um, I'm interested in what the committee says. Mr. Mew? This is Maria. Um, Superintendent, I believe on that original schedule that we, we did way back last year, I think we were scheduled for the Gilmet in That's October. Right. Cool. Yeah. So could we could we go to the Gilmet? I, I, my recommendation is to stay with that for now, but I, I think after the Gilmet it was still kind of wide open, wasn't it? Well, I think after the Gilmet we were going back to central office okay. for November, and then in December another school. Yeah. I remember there was some good nature ribbing between committee members about who's district and all that stuff. So we need a frost after we go to central office. Frost after central office. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, you know, Mr. Mayor, I'll let you. Have yeah, that, that works. So it looks like go met in October, the central office in November, and then uh, the frost in December. Uh, love to take a motion that way. That way we can just get it done. Motion. Motion. Motion has been made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Read it for kids. Gilmet. October, Gilmet. Gilmet. November, Central Office. December, Frost. Okay. Maybe we'll get some cattle. And uh, just a reminder that the October meetings move to a Wednesday. If I'm not. That's correct. Right. It's a Wednesday. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. My understanding is it's been moved to Wednesday, October 8th. Is that correct? Instead of Thursday, October 9th, yes. Correct. Can, can I ask why? Yeah, that's what I said. Right. I think it was a scheduling um, issue. We'll just try to get to work around some people's schedules. Okay, because more than likely that might not work for me. But if it works for everyone else. Yeah, let's circle back. If you have an issue with the Wednesday, this is the song. We'll see what we can do. But I think. Another Thursday? Um, just do it offline, right? So we'll okay. see right now, Thursday, that Thursday doesn't work for that Wednesday doesn't work for everybody. Let's see if we can have something that everybody can do. Alright. Okay. 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 Okay.
accomplishment for our children, our teachers and staff. Let's move Dara's public schools in the new year forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marley. Uh, moving to adjournment, Mr. Mayor. Any final thoughts from the group before we adjourn? We'll ask that you close it out, sir. Uh, it's a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So thank, thank you, folks. We'll see you in October.